Hi guys and ladies, welcome to another video. Today, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about an amazing gift that um, Russian Adam sent to me. I did an unboxing yesterday, if you've been following my channel, and I went through some of his fragrances over the last couple months, uh, which he also was very kind enough to send me. They're right here. There's basically Oud Zen, Civet de Nuit, Oud Picante, uh, War and Peace, Manly, and uh, Chinese Oud, and then Antiquity. And also, one of my subscribers was kind enough to send me Atlantic Ambergris 2. Another one of my subscribers was kind enough to send me um, Russian Oud. And another one of my subscribers was kind enough to send me uh, Siberian Musk, I believe it was. And I, I really enjoyed exploring the house. And then something amazing happened. So I ran out of uh, the, the samples and Russian Adam said, not to worry, I've got some stuff coming your way. I already made it it's in the post. Uh, it'll be there soon. And he basically sent me this. I, I ended up taking the tape off of all of them while they were in transit so they didn't spill. But basically what each one of these is, is an actual raw material, which is, you know, I'm still shocked by it. Yesterday, I should have kept the camera rolling because as I was taking the tape off, I opened each one of these and smelled them. And, um, you know, it really hit me just how beautiful some of these just individual materials are. I'll give you an example. I'm going to go through each one of these because I want to show them. I'm going to open them. I'm going to smell them and I'm going to, you know, talk a little bit about them. This video might just be me ooing and eyeing over this stuff. Honestly, it might not even... Um, make any technical sense yet but i think i have an idea that i think might be kind of cool so the first one is just the formulations of an idea and russian adam gave me this idea um he said you know maybe you could compare it to some of your favorite perfumes so last night just out of the blue i just picked one randomly and i picked tonka bean okay now this is um This is from last night, by the way, and it is still going strong. It might even be stronger than last night. Maybe my nose was fatigued, but I woke up this morning and smelled this, and it's even stronger. But uh, what I did is I put a little drop of the Tonka Bean X-Ray right here, and I put a I put some of Feb Delicious right here, which is one of one of the Tonka perfumes, right? Feb Delicious right here um on on this hand and i and i just did a quick comparison and you know what i i enjoy just the regular tonka just the actual ingredient more if this was a perfume i would like tonka i struggle with tonka probably my favorite tonka is guerlain's tonka imperial but even that seemed very soft and fleeting and i didn't care for it this stuff is i mean it is um nutty, a little bit almondy. My wife said it smells like fireworks last night, which I thought, fireworks? Um, and then I smelled it some more and I said, okay, maybe there is a little bit of a smoky, like, um, <clears throat> like roasted, like a smoky roasted aspect to the Tonka. Just again, you can't put a, you, this is priceless stuff right here. So I'm going to go through them. Um, and so I already showed you Tonka. Let me show you the next one. This is the only one that's in this little type of vial. And this is Santa Midi 1906. Now, I don't know what that 1906 means. I don't know if it's just a verbiage or if it's relating to the year. But... <sighs> See, this is the problem. I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to describe this stuff. I think this is, you know, obviously a sandalwood, a sandalwood extraction. But I, I'm going to, I'm going to try all this stuff on skin at some point, even off of the blotter. Like uh, any, any gave me these neat little Arige Ladori blotters, by the way. So even off of the blotter, this Tonka bean smells amazing. Better than any perfume I can 
I can think of with that's supposed to be Tonka, um, which is crazy when you think about it. Okay, so let's go through this because there's 50 of these. So this video will be 12 hours if I don't get a move on it. Next is Tobacco Absolute. Now you can see, so for the Tonka one, I dipped the little stick in there yesterday. And I mean, you can see how much is there. These look small, but all you need is a drop. Literally all you need is a drop. Um, so this is Tobacco Absolute. You know, tobacco is one of my favorite notes in perfumery. Uh, it's sweet, but not the kind of sweet that puts me off like Feb Delicious. I was wearing this last night and I almost wanted to wash it off. I mean, it's, it's just sickly sweet, gloopy, you know? The sweetness in these naturals are completely, um, you know, completely different. Tobacco Absolute on its own. It, it smells a little bit like, you know, my father smoked when I was a kid. And if you take the, if you take that piece of wrapper that used to be around the cigarette pack off and you smell it, you get part of what Tobacco Absolute smells like. The other part almost has this hay-like, um, you know, this, this, this hay-like dry quality to it. And, um... This is also, this is a very complex scent profile. I think I read somewhere that Tobacco Absolute, which you can see how thick it is, look. It doesn't just, it doesn't just go down. I mean, it sat in the case all night like this. It, it, it would take all day, like sitting like this, to have it, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a thick resin almost. And, um... Yeah, that um, cigarette that, for me, it's an old smell because I don't smoke. Um, but my father did for a while, and I and I remember this smell occasionally, you know. I, I remember that inside of the cigarette pack, you know, you rip the foil. You rip, remember they used to have that foil around the cigarettes, and you would rip the foil. I don't know if they still do. I haven't touched the cigarette pack in forever. Um... But, all right, let's go to the next one. So this is really interesting because, let me put these in somewhat order here. Okay, so this one is, this one is Labdanum Resin. And I told you this is the one, this is basically the one ingredient I have some experience with because I was able to buy long ago, I wish I could find it, Labdanum, that came like, with these pieces of paper, these pieces of plastic around it, and you would pull the plastic back and you would smell the labdanum. Um, and, oh God, here, let me show you this when you open it, by the way. So this has been sitting all night upside down like this. And look, look at the gunk that's still stuck on the side. It's not like it all goes to the bottom, but look at when you open this. Look, let me see if I can show this. Look at that. You see that? You see how sticky it is on the opening? That is what labdanum is like. It'll stick to you, but it smells absolutely... Oh, God. I mean, this is one of my favorite smells in perfumery. There are so many perfumes that if they just smelled like this, I would wear, I would wear it and love it. And I love labdanum. Tom Ford, Sahara Noir, I mentioned... Chanel's Le Lyon, the ultimate labdanum fragrance for me. Roja's Hot Lux, which is like $3,500 a bottle. It's a, it's obscene. You know, he should he should be ashamed of himself charging that. Um, it is a good fragrance. I would love a bottle of it, but I'll never pay anyway. I just I just won't. Um, and but but there's some labdanum heavy fragrances that I like. Like I mentioned Sahara Noir from Tom Ford. I tested the Zoo Everlasting, Rachel sent me a sample of that, and I really enjoyed that. That's a labdanum fragrance with Narcissus Absolute in it. So interesting combination. But 
Um, just the raw material in and of itself, the resin is absolutely beautiful. Uh, let me see if I can show you the opening again. I just look at this. It's unbelievable. And it never ends either. It just, it just constantly stays sticky. See that? Like spider webs. It's so thick and heavy. Um, it's just, it's a holy, it's a holy resin for me. You know, you think about men and women using that, um, hundreds, thousands of years back into history. It's, it's mind blowing. Like I said, I had a little bit of a moment yesterday smelling some of these. Um, I don't know if it was the mixture of, you know, the act of kindness that Russian Adam showed to me or whether it was actually some of these ingredients, but I was sitting here like, man, it really hit me yesterday. Um, all right. So the next one is labdanum absolute. Now look at the color here completely different than the resin. Now it's still thick and gloopy. Sorry about the camera work, by the way. This is not going to be a professional photo by or photo shoot or whatever. It's not as sticky. See that? It smells like It smells like honeyed labdanum. Um, I'm not going to be able to describe these. I don't know if I have the words to describe these. Um, honey, honeyed labdanum is the best maybe I could do for now. Maybe like an alcoholic like touch, you know, like honeyed labdanum with the, with a drop of alcohol. Okay, next one's a big one. This is a big one for a base of a perfume. This is Benzoin. Sultan Pasha got on a um, video with the Wasps from the Lofts guys, and he, he multiple times during that video, he mentioned the base of his fragrances are Benzoin heavy. And I can completely see why. Uh, I mean... Do you even need a base other than benzoin? It's, it's, now this is also thick, but look, it's not as thick. It can move a little bit. See that? So that's benzoin. Um, next. Now this is one of the only ones that actually leaked and there's there's basically nothing left, unfortunately, but I can still smell it. It's um, Vanilla Absolute. <clears throat> it smells, um, it does smell of vanilla, but it doesn't smell like vanil vanillin, if you will. If that makes sense. Vanilla Absolute has its own, it has its own twist of, of a smell to the vanilla. It's definitely not as sweet. Um, almost like you're smelling a straight, you know, vanilla pod, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, next is Hay Absolute. Now, Hay Absolute, I mentioned tobacco has this hay-like quality. Hay Absolute has this tobacco-like quality. <laughs> but you can definitely distinguish it from um, the Tobacco Absolute because it smells a little more of, like, cut grass. Um, if you've ever been on, like, a, hay, like a tractor ride with, with hay you know, in, in the back or something, and it gives off that very fall. It's a very fall smell to me for some reason, but there's some hay absolute or hay notes in some of my favorite fragrances, like Shergi, for example, that has tobacco and hay, and that's one of my favorite tobacco fragrances. And here you can kind of see they're playing off of each other. Um, 
you know, at least I can see it with the materials right in front of me. Maybe just smelling Shergi, I would have thought this smell was all tobacco, but now I know it's also hay. Amazing. I mean, I could just sit here and smell these every day. I don't even have to wear a perfume. I would. I, I haven't even put anything on yet today. I don't even have a scent of the day to share with you guys yet. Okay, next is Violet Leaf Absolute. See that? My God. This is... It's, um, it's almost like sticking your head in a, you know, when you're done mowing the lawn and you have those clippings, imagine if you clipped up a bunch of like green, like, um, green leaves from flowers. Like, um, you know, if you had, if you had, if you just took rip the flower rip the leaves off of roses and violets and and all that stuff and maybe threw some weeds in there for good measure it almost has this celery like vibe um very 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 green um and you can see it's also pretty thick the absolute But if you're expecting this to smell exactly like Fahrenheit or Jeffrey Bean's um, gray flannel. Wow. Okay, next is highly aged patchouli. I can smell this just, just from picking it up. I can smell this. It is so powerful. You can tell it's patchouli. It almost smells like a liquor, like a liquored patchouli. Like, um, like you took two ingredients to begin a perfume and one was like a liquor note, like a rum or a cognac, and one was patchouli. <sighs> this video is just going to be me shaking my head and smelling this, so... I'm just, I'm just warning you now. Oh God, oak moss, absolute. The oak moss that I know. God. I mean, it smells like you're in like a mossy tunnel, like, um, it smells like you are in a underground hot like a like a hobbit's hovel or something and there's moss growing all on the walls that's what this smells like and look at the color look how black that is unbelievable outrageous oak moss absolute next cacao absolute Oh, chocolatey. Like the richest chocolate you could ever imagine. Like if you just took a chocolate, you know how Hugo Boss did like Boss Bottled Extreme and it smelled like you took Boss Bottled and like put two Boss Bottles into one and made it one Boss Bottle? This smells like you've taken like 20 dark chocolate bars and put them all in here and condensed it down like a black hole to a small little point, and that's what you get. It's so rich. Unbelievable. And look how thick it is. I mean, it's stuck to the wall still after, st after sitting upright all night. This is not coming down. Grav this does not care about gravity. Next, oh, we're going to go to the rose. Okay, so the rose, I should tell you that 
the rose ones um, surprised me a little bit because they did smell like rose. So we're going to start with Bulgarian rose. So they did smell like rose, but, but look at this. They smelled like rose, but they didn't. They almost smell like an artichoke. That's what it smells like to me. It smells like an artichoke. Like you ground up artichoke and put it in here, and, and that's what the rose absolute smells like. Bulgarian rose absolute. There is a hint of rose in the background. You know what it's like? It's like you have taken an artichoke um, leaf, okay? You know how you eat the artichoke and you pull the meat off and you have and you're left with that leaf. And when you pull the meat off, sometimes you get the smell of the artichoke even more. And then you dip it. Imagine that you dip that artichoke leaf in rose water. And that's what Bulgarian rose absolute smells like. Oh God. Hey. Russian rose. Now this tones down that artichoke smell big time. This smells much more of other things than just artichoke. It's there, but it's it's toned down, you know? And um it's thick. Look how thick this is. Look at this. Ah, there it goes. <sighs> it's 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 like you're smelling rose, but you're not. It's like you're smelling rose from Jupiter, you know, or some Pluto or some some other world, some other galaxy. Taif rose, one of my favorite types of rose because it has this waxy lemoniness that I really love. One of my favorite rose fragrances. Oh, I put it away. It's under lock and key. Um, it's uh, it's uh, Taif rose extract by uh, Paris Monte Carlo. But you have to get the extract. Do not get just the EDP. And that uh, I'll, I'll do one day. So what'll be cool is my plan. That's what I was trying to say about the Tonka bean and the Fev Delicios is one day I'll do videos where I will put the ingredient on my skin and I'll put the perfume on my hand and I'll kind of compare and talk about them. This would be amazing to do a comparison, you know, put one of these dipsticks in the Taif Rose, and then put Taif Rose Extract on there from Paris Monte Carlo. And just talk about it on video. I mean, who's doing that? No one. I've never seen a video like that in my life. I think that would be awesome. I don't know if I have the vocabulary to do it, but I will definitely try. Um, Taif Rose. It's just heavenly. I I don't I don't know what to say. I mean, it's just heavenly. It um, it's it's the smell of heaven. Rose absolute. I don't know. I mean, it has this, it does have that artichoke smell underneath. <coughs> Excuse me, whilst I hydrate. Don't worry, the water's not pink here in Texas. <sighs> okay. Let's try this again. <laughs> Yeah. 
it almost smells like you're smelling the rose, but you're also smelling the ground and the soil, you know, like you're getting leaves, you're getting petals, you're getting flowers, like you're, like you're, you're photoshopping a rose into existence from an absolute. Like you're 3D printing a rose. That's rose absolute. Next, a Ron rose. This is special. I mean, the artichoke smell is there, but it's different. It's it's like you're smelling it on, what did I say before, Pluto or Jupiter? It's like you're smelling it on Saturn or Mars. It's a different, it's a, it's like it's from a completely different world. It is from a completely different world. It's from a completely different part of the world. Different soil, different climate, different, I mean... All right, so this is the other one that I think leaked a little bit. There's a tiny little drop left. This is Indian Pink Rose. So this one to me smells the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not turpentine, but like maybe turpentine like quality. It does have that. So again, it has the artichoke green leaf smell, but then it also has this um, almost like, I had the word and then I lost it. it it's almost like it has this, um, this paint thinner quality to it. Indian pink rose. Interesting. Azerbaijan Rose, 1972. I don't know if this means this is like an aged rose. I'm guessing that's what that 1972 means. Oh. I mean, this also has that. My God. This also has that, um that paint thinner quality, but the, um, you know, the rose is like pushed back even further, it's, it feels like. There's something, um, I don't know, there's something like almost holy from now on, from, from this. I get something, I get something like holy from this. Like it's something you'd smell in a church, you know? That kind of thing. Interesting. This is Indian Red Rose. So this goes back to the artichoke heavy smell. Um, you ever smell a rose like, you ever put your nose into a rose flower, like not just kind of gently sniff it, but stick your face into a rose flower, you know? And you inhale deeply and then after you're done, it almost feels like you have like rose pollen in your nose. That's what this smells like with, with artichoke. Okay, first one down. This is the baby one. Um, now we're gonna go to the big boy. So we're 30 minutes in, this is gonna be over an hour. Um, is there a side I wanna start on, does it matter? Okay, yes, let's let's start here. Okay, next we have Vintage Deer Musk Tincture. Now you can see on the bottom, there's 
there's some built up sediment. Come on, baby, focus. See that? And the musks, uh, out of all of these, because I smelled everything yesterday, the most beautiful were like the flowers, the patchouli, those, those really moved me. The oud really moved me. The musks, I hated. <laughs> I absolutely despised smelling the musks yesterday. I'm going to do it again for you guys, but... This isn't as bad as the synthetic. It's the synthetic musks that I really hated smelling straight. They they smell awful. Um, vintage deer musk tincture. This smells slightly sweet. Um, you know how there's an animal Rich Mitch told me about that they make them eat a certain like like you know diet and then their meat comes out smelling that way I forget what it was but you almost get that impression like you're smelling the like you're smelling the um like you are smelling deer musk absolutely but you're also smelling like the like the earthiness that was on the ground in the forest that the deer was foraging for. You know, like you get that, you get that, um, that mixture of the musk, but also some earthy qualities, some, maybe some nuts on the ground or roots or whatever the deer was foraging for. It's, it's interesting. That one's at least interesting. Okay. I think this says vintage tincture, castorium, vanilla beans, and oris. I think that's what that says. Castorium, vanilla beans, and oris. And it says vintage tincture. Right here. God, it just smells lovely. You guys know I love animalics. And, um, I don't know, there's something about castorium, that leatheriness. It's one of my favorite. I mean, I don't get very much vanilla out of this. Maybe it's just there to, maybe it's because it's vanilla bean. It's not the vanilla I'm used to smelling and thinking about. Um, wait till we get to the real auras in here. That is one of the most beautiful... Okay, here we go. We're getting to the crazy ones. USA Skunk Oil. Now, I have a perfume that has skunk oil, and it was sitting right here for the longest time, and I put it back under lock and key, which I will do from sometimes. I'll look at this and go, wait a minute, I don't want you here. Go under lock and key. Uh, be safe, just in case. Um, and I moved it, but it's called, what's it called? It's called um, Fiona. Fiona is the name of the perfume by... Um, God, I can't think of the house all of a sudden. It's that crazy name house. Let me look it up. Fiona. T-S-V-G-A. Suga, I think is how he pronounces it. Suga. Uh, and, th and that has skunk oil in it. Skunk Accord is what... I, I think it's skunk oil. Um, it, um, it does smell somewhat sweet, but... There's also this underlying, like, disgusting smell, like roadkill smell. I mean, living in the USA, we get skunks that die on, on the road, and um, you can smell them if they get run over, you know, because they release their their, their glands or whatever, and, and it you, you drive by it, and you can smell it in the car. Um... And this has this almost like sour sweet combination, but it hits you right in the back of your throat, like the sides of your mouth, like 
oh, you know, it's, it's, it's rough. It's rough stuff. You only need a drop. If you can smell this in a perfume, you put too much. My guess is you just need the tiniest little bit to, you know, add, add that extra something no one else is doing kind of thing, you know, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Next we're going to do, oh, here we, we're going to do, oh, this is one of, this is a beautiful one. This is, um, Sri Lankan oud distilled in rose water. Very interesting. God, that's just freaking gorgeous, man. It's, oh. This is, okay, so, okay, so real quick, if I'm doing a comparison, this would be the one I would compare it to, Tom Ford's Oud Wood, because there is rose wood in here, okay, not rose water, but there's rose wood, it gives off a little bit of the same vibe, but imagine this is created by a child and this is created by a master perfumer, right? If, if Oud Wood smelled like this, I would wear nothing else. I would wear this. That this is, I would have a signature scent. This is one of the most beautiful smells. My God. Okay, so this one is Choco Borai, and this has a claim to fame because this is a Thai plantation oud used in Russian oud perfume. So hang on one second. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Do I have it here? I don't think I do. I think it's under lock and key, unfortunately. Um, well, that's too bad. I was going to show you the Russian. I was going to show you the Russian food. Oh, well. Well, I do have a decant still of that Russian food that um, Jonathan sent me. And you can you can smell this. One day I'll 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 wear what's left. I only have a little bit of that decant left. I'll wear what's left, and I will put I'll I'll do it I'll do a blotter in here. The Tonka the Tonka is just I'll do a blotter dip, and I'll put some on skin. It's like, um, it has that lava-like quality that Russian oud has to it, but it also has that paint thinner, woody, that woody paint thinner, um, that, um, like you took a tree that's decomposing, and to try to help the tree, because you didn't know any better, you took paint thinner, and you and you um, used it like a band aid and put it on all the parts of the tree that is uh, decomposing or that's you know rotting, and you let it sit and you come back six months later and the tree and the paint thinner has kind of melded together into one smell. That's what the choco borai. Oud smells like. So next time I'm on a live with somebody, I'm going to be like, have you smelled the original ingredient of Choco Barai? No, you haven't? Well, you don't know what you're talking about then. Sorry, bud. Just kidding. I'm a nice guy in real life. Um, okay, here we go. So this is actually already diluted. Russian Adam sent me an email talking about these, and he said he already diluted some of these. And this is one that he already diluted. Um, and this is white ambergris tincture. 
Just trying to see if I can get it to mix a little bit, but I don't want it to spill out the top. This is too precious. White ambergris tincture. <sighs> so where skunk oil is like bracingly disgusting, this is animalic, but bracingly beautiful like it just hits you you know like bam um and again thanks to rachel i do have a decant of atlantic ambergris too so one day what i'll do is i will make this my scent of the day i'll wear this i'll, I'll use up this decant and i will wear this on the other hand um just trying to see, you can see on the bottom, it's uh, sediment heavy on the bottom. Um, I mean, I could just sit here smelling these all day. Just, just quit my job, and just sit here and just smell these. Okay, next, <laughs> okay, next, we've got civet tincture, and look, he gave me a lot of it, he knows I like civet, but I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I like this civet. Okay, this is not the bad one, the bad one is the synthetic civet, which I've said before I love because I have... Uh, we'll get to it when I get to the other, to the synthetic civet. But this one, I think, is real civet tincture. I don't think it's synthetic. It smells um, musky. It does have this mus shockingly musky smell. I wouldn't have said civet smells musky. It has a little bit of that sharp feel to it, but it's not as, <clears throat> you know, like the synthetic civet has that twang that almost like you've hit a gong, bang, you know, and it just resonates in your head kind of thing, and it's there, and you know it's there. This is a little bit more subtle. It's, I, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. There is something beautiful in it about, even though it's, um, even though it's a tough ingredient, there's some beauty in it for sure. Okay, next, um, this is patchouli tincture. Patchouli tincture. By the way, these patchoulis, um, my God, if you like fragrances like, um, like if your holy grail is this, L'Instant de Guerlain, Eau Extreme. This is patchouli and cacao. L'Instant de Guerlain, Eau Extreme. With some other things thrown in. There's a tea note in there. You know, perfumery. Good perfumery. Probably, this is probably the last of the great Guerlain's. Even though Jean-Paul Guerlain didn't do this, his fingerprints are all over it because of heritage. You would love this. If you like L'Instant de Guerlain, Eau Extreme, this is heaven. This is patchouli. This is a patchouli lover's heaven. It smells like someone brought a patchouli leaf to you in a pot you know, just one patchouli plant, not a leaf, a plant. And you smelled it, and it didn't smell like natural patchouli. It smelled like you would ex you would think patchouli would smell like, right? After it was distilled. That's what this smells like. It smells exactly how you would expect patchouli to smell. Oh no. All right, hang on one moment. Come on, baby, get out. 
can't get this one out. It doesn't want to come out. Okay, here you go. Ah, uh, this is the other one that, uh, this is the other one that spilled a little bit. I can't, this is the one I couldn't read. Aged. It might be aged patchouli. Yeah, I think it's aged patchouli. You know, imagine you took patchouli and put it in like a cast, like a, like, uh, like, like they age like uh, cognac and stuff in, in oak barrels or whiskey. That's what you get here. And unfortunately, there's only the tiniest little drop, but I can still smell its beauty. Now they're fighting me. Okay. This is patchouli absolute. Look how dark that is. Look at that. God. It smells like you blended patchouli and spinach. Um... Patchouli, spinach, earthy patchouli. You know, think earthy patchouli and spinach. And that's what you get here. Uh, this one would probably be closest to... Maybe like an amber patchouli, like uh, patchouli antique. The patchouli absolute reminds me a bit of patchouli antique. Um... Without the amber, of course, there's no amber. Um, this is Patchouli by Russian Adam. <sighs> it smells like... Um, It smells more like oud with patchouli, if you will, if that makes sense. Like it smells like you're smelling like a, like you're smelling a oud with a, with a touch of patchouli. Aged. It smells like oud aged with a touch of patchouli. That's the best way to describe that one. This one's interesting. Smoky patchouli. Patchouli's out there smoking. So this smells like... Um, <laughs> I don't know how to say this without sounding a little rude to the sample. There used to be this um, cheese, smoked Gouda or something like that. Imagine the smoked quality you get from that smoked cheese and apply it to the patchouli. And that's kind of what you get here. Like we used to have this type of cheese on New Year's Eve that my mother would buy when I was younger. And we would do like cheese and crackers and shrimp on New Year's Eve. It was like a tradition. And um, that's what the smoke in this. Don't think smoke like incense. Yeah, it has that. It has that smoked Gouda, that smoked cheese. Maybe not even Gouda, but some sort of smoked cheese. I don't, I don't, I don't know which one it was, but okay. So these, these next ones are some of the ones that really 
hit me when I was smelling these yesterday because it's so beautiful. And I would not have expected this, but I I really love this. The florals are, are what maybe hit me the hardest. The oud I was kind of expecting, even though I love the oud, and I think I'll enjoy wearing the oud. I'm going to put some real drops on um, pretty soon. Maybe not today, but soon. Uh, but these are the ones that shocked me. I wasn't ready for this. This is Jasmine Grandiflor Grandiflorum. Jasmine Grandiflorum. And, my God. Oh, shit. I got some on my hand. It wants to come with me. Oh, so I accidentally got some on my hand and I just put the tiniest drop. You might not even be able to see it. You see that? The tiniest drop and it smells absolutely, my God, Rich, if you were smelling this right now, I know you don't like florals, but Rich Mitch, I know you don't like jasmine. If you were smelling this, you would love jasmine, I'm telling you. It's like no jasmine I've ever smelled. Ever. Outside of maybe, I'm trying to think back, maybe like the time that my parents took me to the botanical gardens when I was a little kid, you know. That might be the last time my brain remembers smelling jasmine this beautiful. <sighs> Elang Absolute. Definitely gives off that yellow floral vibe. Um, but this is, again, like no Ylang I don't think I've ever smelled. This is, you know, most Ylang Ylang comes off as that sickly sweet yellow floral thing that really puts me off sometimes. Not here. I remember Ouch, I remember Thomas from Ouch 110 said he was on a, a quest to find the perfect Ylang Ylang fragrance. I, I don't think you're gonna find anything as beautiful as this, honestly. This is... There is a little bit of that greenness in there too, like you're smelling the flower, but you're also smelling the leaves, like you're smelling the, the stem, the leaves with the flower, but Maybe I, I I don't I don't know um, I don't know it's 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 not something that I I don't think I'm um, I don't think I have the verbiage to talk about that. Okay, this one shocked me. This is dark tuberose. Um, it's like, it's so narcotic. I just don't, I don't know how to describe it. I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe this. Okay, it smells like you took white florals with with green 
leaves and stems and blended them in a blender and turned them into a smoothie. But the white florals are so narcotic. It's like, it's like, it's, it's what you would want if you wanted to, you know, make a bee land on you, you would put this on kind of thing, you know. They would think, they would think you're a white floral. Okay, next, this one. Okay. So the Jasmine Grandiflore is beautiful, and I did get some on my hand accidentally, so now I have some on my wrist. But this is the one that made me go, wow, what in the hell? Um, this is Jasmine Sombach. This one, Jasmine Sombach. My God. don't know. I don't, I don't know if I can even talk. I was not expecting this. Whatever this is, I, I was not expecting it. I, if, if somebody can describe this in words in English without blubbering like a child, like a more, like a, like a, you know, like a blubbering idiot, um, please let me know. I, I, I'm at a complete loss. It, it, it reminds me of smelling like a beautiful flower, but it also for some reason reminds me of like my grandmother's old house. You know what I mean? Like that old lived in house, like before she died, she lived in this house for like 45 years, 50 years, you know, that kind of thing. And when a house gets that old, you get the creaky floors and the wood starts smelling different and the books in the attic start. It smells like, it smells like flowers with that old house smell. I, I don't know how to describe it. That's, that's what it smells like to me. Some of these are going to be weirdly personal, but I have to draw on. I have no other experience to draw on. Okay, now we're going to get to some of the ones that I hate. Um, cashmere musk. Okay, this is not the one I hate. Um, definitely musky. Sweet undertones, oddly clean, like you just pulled your clothes out of a dry, like a, a dryer kind of thing. And it has those dryer sheets. Here, synthetic civet. I don't like that anywhere near as much as I like it in the perfume. So the one that I'm thinking of, obviously Koros, which is under lock and key, but this is Furio by Jacques Bogart. One of my favorite synthetic civet perfumes. And I, I used to say... I... Smelling it now, I don't even hate it as much as I did yesterday. Yesterday, I was like, whoa, what in the world is that? One day later, and here I am. I can't say I hate it. Like, I, I'm actually starting to like it. One day, that's all it took. One freaking day. Synthetic... Either D musk, synthetic deer musk, I guess. Synthetic D musk. You know, there's some synthetic musk fragrances that I have, like, um, here we go. I've shown this one before. This is, um, 
Musk Kublai Khan in the vintage Palais Royale presentation in the bell jar. And I struggle a little bit with this fragrance. Um, I'll do a comparison. Yeah, I think this is like this synthetic musk. Maybe there's real musk in here even mixed with the synthetic musk. I don't know. You know, it's sweet, it's heavenly, it's... I think of, for some reason with musk, and you guys know I was, I, well maybe you guys don't know, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I was actually born in Jordan. And I think of the religion of Islam when I smell this musk, for whatever reason. You know, I think of people going to the mosque and stuff like that. I'm not Muslim. But in Jordan, there is a big um, Muslim population. Actually, I think 99% of the country might be Muslim. 98, 99%. And for some reason, I think of like the mosque, you know, broadcasting the prayers. I, I don't know why my brain goes to that when I smell this, but it does. It has a little bit of that, I don't, I don't know why, it, it just, it just reminds me of, of, um, now I've been here since I was one, so I can't say, oh, it's because of my time in Jordan, uh, but I did, we did go back for a summer when I was 14 years old, and I really, really enjoyed, um, my time there, really, really enjoyed it, but for some reason, um, that synthetic musk accord reminds me of, 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 uh, it reminds me, maybe not so much of Islam, it reminds me of, um, you know that white outfit that is worn very commonly in the Middle East? I don't know what that's called, but it's very thin and it's white and the men wear it and it's supposed to help keep the sun off you but still be breathable kind of thing. That's what that is. Synthetic musk reminds me of Indonesian Maroque. I think that says Maroque. I don't know what this is. Oh, I gotta look up what Indonesian Maroque is. Excuse me. M-O-R-O-K-E. Huh. It doesn't know. M-O-R-O-K-E. There's Indonesian Maroki. I don't know what this is, but it's beautiful. Whatever it is, it's beautiful. It has this, um, this cinnamony texture and a little bit of a smell, but, but definitely the cinnamony texture. I need to figure out what that is. Okay, next. Next, we are going to do So this is a Chinese plantation oud called Kinnam. <sighs> Definitely smells woody. Um, not very rotten, a little bit clean, but, um, very enjoyable. I would love to wear this. I would love to wear this as a, as a, as a oud oil scent. Okay. 
This is the one. So I told you the the jasmine. The, just that little drop of jasmine grandiflora. Uh, so this is the oud oil that really hit me yesterday. It was one floor, which was jasmine sambac, and one oud oil, and this is it. For whatever reason, just smelling them straight up, initial smell, this is the one that I went, wow. I absolutely love this, and I don't know why. This is Philippines Sri Lanka by Russian Adam. You know what it smells like to me? It smells like you took one of the most beautiful iris. Like, it smells like the iris in Roja's Great Britain, which is a $2,000 perfume. And you mix it with one of Russian Adam's beautifully distilled ouds. So this is oud, I mean, this is leather and iris and a um, bunch of other things. It's a Russian leather, basically, uh, Great Britain. And this smells like, at least from here, who knows how it develops on skin, but from here, it smells like iris and oud instead of, oud, instead of iris and leather. I can't wait to wear this. I cannot wait. Okay, two rows left. I have no clue what this is. A Q Blossom. I wish I knew what that was. Um, I have no clue what this is, but it gives off this pink floral vibe, pinky lemonade like smell. This is Indian Santal. Now this, I think, um, don't quote me on this, but I think this is one of his Russian perfumes from his personal collection um and and russian adam did a video by the way i went and looked up his video go to go to the arise ladore youtube channel subscribe is what i would say and i was shocked i wasn't subscribed because i was 100 percent sure i subscribed so less yesterday i went and i subscribed and i watched his video on indian santal i think it was called and he went into beautiful detail how the Indian government and the Russian government kind of worked together and Indians sent Russia this gift of, you know, tons of this beautiful, hard to find, rare sandalwood. I think he even said there's goat hair tincture in this, but then he said the base is loads of ambergris, real ambergris. Um, that they used to use back then in these perfumes. And I can't wait to, to experience this. If this is what this is, and I think it is, I would highly encourage you go take 20 minutes of your day and go watch that Russian Adam video. It is, um, it's good stuff. It really shows what a perfume lover he is too. This is Bengal Santal. I'm guessing this is Bengal Sandalwood. How thick it is. This. I would instantly know this is sandalwood. Um, I don't think I have the ability to distinguish between Bengali sandalwood or, you know, or Australian or anything like that yet. But it 
It's such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful scent. I just wore Bois de Zeal as my scent of the day and it's back under lock and key. I kept it here for a little bit and then I, some of the ones that I really like, I moved to a secure location. They get VIP access. Um, but I wore that whenever I had a big meeting with the boss's 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 boss the other day. And, you know, I wanted to wear something reserved but beautiful and I went for Bois de Zeal. Which is my current favorite sandalwood fragrance in EDT. I've never smelled the EDP. But sandalwood is such a relaxing, like, you know, you could be going a million miles an hour and someone puts some sandalwood on your skin and it just calms you, just melts you, you know. Your voice goes down an octave. It just, it's that kind of thing, you know, for me. Okay, this is Indonesian sand sandal. Indonesian sandalwood. You could identify this as sandalwood. Um so this Bengal sandalwood smells like natural sandalwood to me. This one smells almost like it's a synthetic sandalwood. I know it's not, but it has that smell to it, like you're smelling Javanol or something. It's still, it's still very beautiful, and I'm sure it really opens up on skin, but it has a different accord, a different vibe. That's what's so interesting about this. That's why I'm so blessed to get to do this, because, um, you know, this is an experience that... Uh, it, it's it's amazing. Indian Santal Fresh Distillation. So this must be a new distillation. I think you would still be able to identify this as sandalwood, obviously. But the different little nuances I'm not able to convey to you guys. I can smell them, but I just can't, I don't have the words to convey them, unfortunately. This is Australia sandalwood. So this is what they started using, this Australian sandalwood, once Mysore sandalwood got really, you know, harvested to the point of extinction where the Indian government had to step in and say, hey, if we don't stop this, there's not going to be any Mysore sandalwood left on earth. And um, so they went to Australia and they, and they used this. And I think, I think that this is the sandalwood. If I had to do a comparison video with Australian sandalwood, I would probably compare it with something like Santal Royale. I think they use this Australian brand of sandalwood in here. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and I wore this the other day to bed. I haven't given this a full wear yet. This is a... Um, this is a tester bottle that I bought from fragrancebuy.ca. And, you know, with the prices going up, I got a good deal. I figured, what the heck? People I trust, like Eugene, say they don't mind this now. He used to hate this, so I figured I want to try it. I see why he hates it. It's not his cup of tea where it's light, fine French perfumery. This is heavy, in-your-face, Middle Eastern, scratchy. But you can sense the Australian sandalwood in here, I think. But you really have to wait hours for it to come out. When you first spray, you don't get it immediately. You get that rose and synthetic screechy oud and stuff like that, so... Okay, next. Okay, next is New Caledon Caledonia Sandalwood. New Caledonia Sandalwood. Mm. 
Yeah, same thing. I mean, I, I, I don't have the, I guess I don't have enough knowledge of what, what changes. I mean, I can smell that spongy sandalwood, you know, that lemony spongy sandalwood smell. But other than telling you guys it's sandalwood, I, I don't know what else I can say. This is Santal 2000. I think this is one of the ones that Maybe on skin they'll open up more, but other than saying it's uh it's a, uh, you know, there is a touch of a floral element to this one, but okay. Next, next we have oh this one I enjoyed too, Carnation Absolute. So I've always said I liked carnations, you know, let's see, do I have carnation fragrances here? Um, I was going to grab Abbey Rouge. I don't. I don't have Abbey Rouge here. That's okay. Um, carnation Absolute. It smells so green. You know, the absolutes smell like you took the entire flower and just put it in a wood mulcher and let it get mixed in with like the mulch and stuff that the flower was grow that was growing in. And that's what you get. Carnation absolute. Stunning stuff. Okay. This is also, this is probably my third favorite, my, my three absolute favorites so far is this Phil, Philippine Sri Lanka by Russian Adam is my favorite, and then probably the Jasmine Sambak. And then this, this is Oris Absolute 80% Iron Owns. Irons. Um, my God. Okay, so there's one fragrance that comes to mind smelling this, and I just got it, and I'm very glad I did. And some people said, oh, it's the best iris fragrance ever, and I went, yeah, okay, sure. No, it is probably one of the best iris fragrances I've ever smelled. Now, I don't think it's going to be my favorite to wear, I think Dior Homme, the Silver Stem from 2005, is still my favorite, but this deserves all of the love and recognition because these are very close. This is Hermes Iris, cold iris. So Dior Homme, you could describe it as maybe being like a little bit warm. You know, it's 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 a Jacques Polish creation. It's beautiful. This is a cold iris. You get this carroty, like vegetal smell in the opening. But it's the it's the closest. If I was gonna do a comparison, it east would be it. And that just goes to show the value. And this is a new bottle. This is not a vintage. I mean, maybe it's somewhat of a vintage, I don't know. E D A A P. 100 mil. But this is not this is the Jean-Claude Elena version, not the original. Olivier Jacobetti in the blue bottle, right? Um, and it's just the Oris Absolute. The Oris Absolute. This is so precious. My God. It's like you're smelling that rooty bulb just you just rip the orris bulb out of the ground and you're just smelling it with and 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 you get it's it's it i love iris i'm a huge iris lover smelling the original like that the actual orris absolute is a gift it's a gift um uh, chinese co2 now i thought originally that this was the same uh, oud used in Chinese oud, but Russian Adam said it is not actually. It is, um, this was a wild oud, a wild uh, 
food from China that they found. This is a, I think he said this is a plantation grown oud that's supposed to be just a little bit cleaner and still to be enjoyed, but it doesn't have the depth or the nuances that the Chinese oud, uh, wild oud that they used had. But even with that, okay, even saying all that, even knowing it's supposed to be a cleaner version, let's say, this is absolutely stunning. I mean, putting a drop of this real oud oil on uh, and you compare it to like what I wore yesterday, which was, look at this. It's thick stuff. You compare what I wore yesterday, which was Spirit of Dubai's Oud and I mean. This is what those this is what those oud companies are trying to make. They're trying to make this smell. It smells like this. The oud dipped in rose water, right? Um, you know, it's it's the the only way I can describe the oud dipped in rose water is imagine a Rich Ladore did Tom Ford's oud, oud wood. Imagine he did it, not L'Oreal. Okay, this is sweet Indian. I love this. I love this oud. It's animalic, it's it's barnyard, it's fecal, it's the Indian, it's the Indian oud that I was that we I was actually talking about when wearing Spirit of Dubai uh yesterday. It has that animalic kind of like the night. Uh the the night I think I think Frederick Malls the Knight uses a Indian oud. The Knight and um, Spirit of Dubai's oud remind me of each other. This has this fertilizer like smell, um, but. It smells so much more. There's nothing else interfering with it. You know, even the night has that rose that will remind you of Portrait of a Lady. Uh, and here you don't have that getting in the way. You just have the beauty of the oud. My God. Classical Indian oud oil. This smells like you took that Indian Oud profile and added a couple drops of that skunk oil in there. Maybe a wisp of incense kind of thing. This is Burma Savage. I don't know what this is. I'm guessing this is a name of an Oud. Oh yeah, I love this. These ouds are just, they're, they're amazing. They're, they're, it smells like you're smelling a perfume, you know, like you're smelling a perfume with 300 notes and ingredients. It's so complex. Whatever I end up wearing today is going to be a big letdown compared to smelling all this stuff. Um, this is Philippines. Oh, I love this. It smells like... It smells like a mahogany cabinet or bar, you know, or bench or mahogany bench, mahogany bar, you know, like you put your arm on at the bar, and but it's mahogany wood and it's... It smells old. It smells like old, like old wood. Um... You know, in America, if you go to some of the older cities, like on the East Coast that were built a long time ago, some of that wood has that 
you know, it's been aging hundreds of years type smell. And this one has that. I really like this. I like this. And I, in the Philippines was also maybe the, a mixture of the Philippines, Sri Lanka that I really love. This is my favorite so far. There's something that really touches me there. Um, this is Sweet Thai. I love this too. I don't know if I can describe it, but I really like it. Um, it's beautiful stuff. Maybe when I wear it, it'll open up more. This is Cambodia Oud. I love all of them. If um, if I was distilling stuff like this, I, I would have a hard time letting go. Like these would be like your babies, you know? Like, um, wow. I mean, what a gift to share this kind of stuff with the world. Amazing. Okay, here's some vintage Russian perfumes for sure. So the first one is called Celebration. And there's very little on Celebration on, on Fragrantica or the internet, other than a few pictures of the bottle. It smells... I can't wait to wear this. I'm going to have to put a few drops on at night, but I don't want to waste it. I want to be very careful with it because I want to do a video for you guys about it. This one, I think there's a little bit more information. There might even be a Fragrantica article on it. It's called Stone Flower. And apparently there was a Russian, maybe like a poem or a book written in the 1930s, 1938, I think, if I remember correctly. And they... Talked about these mythical flowers on a mountain. Um, and God, that's beautiful. Look into it. Look, read it, read the article. I won't be able to do it justice. The last one is Red Moscow. This is a famous one. Red Moscow is a famous one. They just smell so high quality. Shockingly high quality, you know? Um, okay. That was an hour and a half of me just ooing and eyeing. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's, again, a blessing. I, I, I thanked Russian Adam probably a thousand times already. I sent him an email thanking him. I thanked him in the comments. I'm going to thank him again because he oh he deserves the thanks. It's um, really above and beyond. And he's such a humble man. He loves perfume. Um, he um, we're, Someone said in the comments that we're very happy for his success. And I, I could not agree with that more. I am uh, pleased. Um, I am pleased uh, as can be to get to know him and to get to know his perfumes. Uh, it's It's been a joy discovering a house that at first, I will say, maybe I wrote it off. And this, this is partially a story of rebirth because for me, I've rediscovered the house through through these offerings. And, you know, sometimes at night, I'll, I'll wear a fragrance of the day, whatever I'll wear. I'll wear my Amouage, I'll wear my Roja, I'll wear my Ungaro or whatever it is, my Jeffrey Bean, and then at the end of the night, though, I want something more, and I'll just come and put, like, one spray of antiquity on, and it just, ugh, you know, the, the complexity, the depth, the ingredients, it's, it's so much more. And so, really enjoying, really, really enjoyed this. This is going to give me years of pleasure because I'm going to do comparison videos. Well, I'm at least going to be able to talk about the ingredient themselves, like the Tonka. 
the Tonka versus Feb Delicious. This Tonka is this is what Feb Delicious should have been. So there you go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thank you for watching the video and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, I, I will be doing my usual videos again soon, but I wanted to just highlight this beautiful, beautiful gift from Russian Adam. So cheers. Thank you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye guys.